Doubt and Meeting with Death To Gay Caban The phone was ringing, but if you heard the sound, it was of the ear-splitting kind. I was on a bus. Why would someone set an alarm on a bus? I tried not to think too much about it. Some questions carry an unexpectedly brain-draining substance in them. Therefore, sometimes I prefer to fall into a well and keep rolling without thinking about my arm or leg rather than hearing a question. There is a thing called unintentional sleeping during long journeys. In such a state, my eyes were rolling into my skull when I was suddenly awakened by an alarm sound that sounded like a horn. Sometimes people remember things unintentionally because of something else. It is something like, those certain questions. If something happens, you remember certain things, and there is almost nothing you can do about it. That's exactly what happened to me as soon as the old man turned off his alarm on his phone, and I remembered. I think I was seven years old, and I was traveling to my hometown, Erzurum, with a similar journey to my current one, but in my father's car. I say my father's car because for some reason, I don't know exactly why, but perhaps due to love or lack thereof, the things my father used seemed to belong to him rather than to our family, to us. Although my toys or pens or my mother's headscarves or... Wait. Let me think now. What else did my mother have? Anyway, our belongings were also my father's. But his belongings seemed to be only his. But now I know that nothing belongs to anyone. A person is only for oneself. We had finally arrived at the Escale district of Erzurum. We only had to reach the village. I don't remember what brand my father's car was but it was a model that was considered average at the time. We had bought it just two months ago. The reason I mention this is because I hope it might mean something for what I'm about to tell you. It was already past midday. The distance from the district to the village was quite long, really long. We finally entered the village, but it felt like we had also brought along some unfavorable things, or with our arrival, we had overturned a tanker of bad luck in the village and we were enveloped in the smell of some unfavorable things. Yes, some unfavorable things. My grandparents had a twinkle of joy in their eyes, perhaps a little more so in my grandmother's eyes than my grandfather's. Everyone was talking excitedly. I, on the other hand, was unaware of what I should think. That is, the chaos of the city, the nausea of the exhaust fumes, and the rotting faces of people. As I wandered around the house in the village square, painted with brown and occasional green, just like that. The smell of the lentil soup my grandmother cooked mixed with the air that my mother said would be good for my lungs while on the road. And while I was wandering, I was inhaling the air that felt like elixir, and then exhaling it, while still looking at it, wondering if the air was getting polluted even though I was exhaling. It wasn't getting polluted. The evening call to prayer had begun. At that moment, some sounds from all around the village, yes, of course, some sounds that scared me a little, started to rise. Dogs were barking. And after a while, I start to spoon my soup at the table. People are talking. Faces are smiling. And just then, a fist, smothered in the foulness seeping from the overflowing tank, starts pounding on the door of the house. But before we even come into contact with the taint that this force has thrown up, a horn starts blaring from my father's car, which was enveloped in the same waxiness that had surrounded the entire village. Yes, now I'm sure it was waxiness. It's hard to describe how everyone at the table, except for my grandfather, got up in a state of shock. How far away from the village was that overflow tank? I'm thinking now, long after. My father is running towards the car. My mother and sister are at the door with a fist that has just hit it. My grandmother's closest friend, or as the old folks used to call her, her soul sister, has passed away. But why is the horn honking? My father still doesn't understand. My grandmother is deeply saddened. She can't stand and collapses into my mother's arms. My grandfather leaves the wax that has accumulated on top of the soup and rushes to his wife's side. As for me, at that moment, I feel the smell of the trouble as if it were the first time in my throat. My father couldn't stop the horn no matter what he did, 
the young and middle-aged men in the village gathered in front of our door, while the women and girls were at the neighboring house where my grandmother's friend's body was found. The horn kept blaring persistently. Most of the women were crying with the horn accompanying their tears. Their crying decreased as the night went on and turned into deep murmurs. My father, who didn't want the horn to be removed, took his car to the fields and left it in the darkness. Perhaps the darkness ended there, and if the trouble didn't reach it, at least the car could be saved. My father's nerves were shattered. He was angry. He said he would wait until the horn stopped honking instead of taking it apart. Morning came, noon came, morning came, noon came. They buried the deceased, afternoon arrived, and as evening approached, they talked about something. After the discussions, with the agreement of the villagers, my father brought the car to the cemetery, to the grave of the deceased. It turns out that when someone dies, a fresh meat smell attracts wolves from the mountains. They dig the earth and eat the body. That's why a volunteer would stay at the grave for a night or two. Since the village was already suffering from the noise of the car, they agreed to put the sound to good use. They stationed the car at the grave that night. My grandmother was angry about the decision the villagers made, but she didn't have the strength to argue. She fell silent. That night, I watched and waited from the front of the house, looking as far as the cemetery. Perhaps, I thought, there are wolves that aren't afraid of noise. Maybe. Who knows? For the first time in my life, I might see a wolf. When morning came, the horn's power had drained and the sound disappeared. It was essentially dead, but they didn't bury it. Two years after that day, my grandmother joined her friend in the afterlife. Now, when I go to the village, before I reach the house, I will visit her and her friend's grave. Hopefully. Unless something goes wrong. My grandmother was angry about the decision the villagers made, but she didn't have the strength to argue. She fell silent. That night, I watched and waited from the front of the house, looking as far as the cemetery. Perhaps, I thought, there are wolves that aren't afraid of noise. Maybe. Who knows? For the first time in my life, I might see a wolf. When morning came, the horn's power had drained, and the sound disappeared. It had actually died, so to speak. But they did not bury it. Two years after that day, my grandmother joined her friend in the afterlife. Now, when I go to the village, before I reach the house, I will visit her and her friend's grave. Hopefully. If nothing unexpected happens.